Trump's outsourced the judiciary, and he's got outsourced energy policy, and Russia is going to control our foreign policy. Is that what you really want? Because mm. that's what he's really promising to do. Mm. Joining me now, former Hawaii Congresswoman, 2020 presidential candidate, and author of For Love of Country, Tulsi Gabbard is in the house. Tulsi, really good to have you. Uh, so... You know, someone who came from that side is coming over to this side. You look back over the other side and go, were we like, really? So what's your response to now? You know, the, the, the courtroom dramas aren't working, so let's go back to the old Russia, 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 Tulsi. Exactly. I mean, I don't know how they sit there and say that with a straight face. James Carville says it. And then, you know, Jen Psaki is like looking seriously as though she's very concerned and nodding her head. It, they've used this line so much. I don't know how, I, I really don't know how anybody could take them seriously at this point. Make a substantive argument. If they want to talk about Biden versus Trump, look at their records. They both have a presidential record to point to uh, that the American people should look at to actually make an informed decision. So it tells us all we need to know about them now as they have every time when they resort to these cheap smears name calling, waving the Russia, Russia, Russia flag as they have with me and with President Trump and other that, yeah. people like Bobby Kennedy and, and others. It just shows they got nothing else. It's their second they got favorite. Nothing else. It's, 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 the favorite is you're a racist if you disagree with them. The other one yes, is or, or you're a bigot, whatever, or, or uh, the other one's w Russia. Which has also lost its impact and power. When you call everybody a racist, when you say all white people are racist, whether they believe it or not, and that if you say, no, I'm not a racist, then that just proves that you are actually even more of a racist. It, it, you know, the, this, the serious implications of what they are doing uh, is, is actually dividing our country and, and undermining our democracy. And it's a direct assault and attack on our fundamental rights and freedoms and civil liberties, which are some of the main reasons why I decided to leave the Democratic Party. Well, well we're glad to have you. We, we, we're glad to have you. Uh, you, know, you know who else is, um, I, I, let, let's call him, he's come around. Let's, let's put it that way. Bill Maher's come around. Take a listen. We are not young, but we don't present as old. Yeah. Biden does. I saw him yesterday making that speech. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. He's cadaver-like. But his brain is good. He's still great. Uh, well, here's what I said. Like, when I came back after the strike in September, I said, he should get out. Because he's just lost the faith of people. It's not fair. He's actually done a pretty good job. No. I don't know. The view, they changed their tune when they're sitting next to Bill Maher. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, again, they're, they're, I think that the, the record of both President Trump and, and President Biden speaks volumes. Age is a number. Uh, President Biden, obviously, he's having some difficulties at different times. But ultimately, I don't give him any excuse. I give him no pass because he is the president of the United States. He is our commander in chief. I still serve in the US Army Reserve today, now for over 21 years. That actually means something very real. We must hold him accountable and not allow anybody to, to convince us, oh, well, you know, it's somebody else's fault. If it's somebody else's problem. Maybe if he only had different people around him giving him better advice, no. He is the president of the United States and we the people need to hold him to account for the dangerous and negative and harmful consequences of both his domestic policies and his foreign policies. Tulsi, can you sum up the, the book, the new book, For Love of Country, uh, why you wrote it, what it's, what it's about? I talk about why I joined the Democratic Party when I was 21 years old. Back in Hawaii, I was running for state house and, and how at that time I really saw a party that still represented the values of President John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr., and I go through my experiences of having served at the highest levels of, of democratic politics and of my eight years in Congress and running for president in the 2020 election, uh, as well as being a vice chair of the Democratic National Party. I talk about my experiences within the context of why I left the party, but really it's, it's the sounding of a warning bell for all Americans, not just Democrats, but all Americans about how the Democrat elite of today pose a clear, uh, and present threat to our fundamental rights and freedoms as Americans and our ability to live in a safe, peaceful, and prosperous society. If we don't take action to save our country, we will wake up on the other side of this election 
and see that the free country that we love is gone.